today i will be explaining 3d state of stress so welcome to my youtube channel mechanical engineering management let's see first of all the question explain three dimensional state of stress with net sketch so let's start with the 3d stress component and here we are going to consider this figure to understand the components for the 3d stress so let's consider a small cube here you can see at a point in a body as shown in figure here assume the dimension of this cube is very small the most general state of stress at a point may be represented by six components and what are these six components three normal stresses and three shear stresses normal stresses are sigma x sigma y and sigma z that you can see in this figure also sigma x sigma y and sigma z all these three normal stresses are in x y and z direction respectively and three shear stresses that is tau x y here you can see then tau y z and tau x z so keep in mind there are basically six components of the 3d stress three normal stresses and three shear stresses now look at this shear stresses if we take any one shear stress let's say it is tau x y now here look at the significance of this x and y so here x represent as a face and y represent as direction so here in this figure if you see tau x y that means first x that represent as face that means it is always in x plane so here you can see x plane that means perpendicular to x direction so first represent always as a face and here you can see face is x that means it is perpendicular to x direction so x means plane which is perpendicular to x direction and second one y that represent as direction so here you can see the direction of this shear stress tau x y that is in y direction so very important the first subscript represent as the face that means it can be perpendicular to x direction or it can be perpendicular to y direction or it can be perpendicular to z direction here you can see tau x y and tau x z where first subscript is x that means both shear stresses are perpendicular to x direction similarly over here you can see tau y z and tau y x that means first subscript y is represent as the plane perpendicular to y similarly here you can see tau z x that means the shear stress in plane which is perpendicular to z direction and second subscript represent as the direction of the stress so here you can see y that means it is in the direction of y axis here you can see x that is in the direction of x axis so i think you can understand first subscript is always represented as the face that means the plane where the stress is acting and second one is the direction that represent as the arrow direction of this shear stress now normal stress that means the subscript identifies the face on which the stress act here you can see sigma x that is actually normal stress sometimes it is represented by sigma xx also so here subscript x identifies the face on which the stress act so here you can see x that means it is on the x plane so here you can see this is x plane and the sigma x is acting normal to this x plane that's why it is called as the normal stress and keep in mind tension is always taken as positive and compression is taken as negative 
Now it's done for the shear stress. That is generally represented by tau. It has two subscript. Here you can see. The first subscript denotes the phase on which the stress act. Here we have discussed. The first subscript denotes the phase on which the stress act. Here you can see. First subscript acts. It denotes the phase on which the stress act. So here this phase is actually x plane. This phase is called as the y plane and this phase is called as the z plane. So here tau xy that is actually acting on x plane. Here tau yx that is acting on y plane and here tau zy that is acting on z plane. Next the second subscript denotes as the direction. So here it is written the second subscript denotes the direction on that phase. So here y is written that means this shear stress is acting in y direction. If you take this tau zy then here second subscript y that represent the direction of this shear stress tau zy. Now when this shear stress is considered as positive. So first if it acts on a positive phase and positive direction. So this is one of the combination. What do you mean by positive phase? So here this x plane, this y plane and this z plane, these three planes that is shown over here and that you can see are considered as a positive phase. If you look at back of this x plane, that means this plane and it is called as negative plane back to this plane that means this plane is considered as a negative plane so very simple these three planes that you can see are considered as a positive phase and the back of these three planes are considered as the negative planes and positive direction that means this positive x this positive y and positive z are considered as positive direction so if the shear stress is positive when it is acting on a positive phase and in positive direction. That means let's take one example this tau xy. So here this tau xy is acting on this positive x plane and that is in positive y direction. So it is considered as a positive value. If I can consider tau xy in this direction. That means it is acting on positive phase but it is in negative y direction. That means this shear stress in this direction is considered as negative value. Similarly another combination. If it acts in a negative phase and in a negative direction then it is considered as positive value. So if there is a combination of negative phase and negative direction then once again it is considered as a positive value. Means if we consider this plane then it is a negative phase and on that phase if we consider any stress in negative direction then it is considered as a positive value. And remaining all others are negative. So only these two combinations considered as a positive shear stress value and the remaining combination are considered as the negative value for the shear stress. Now from this figure you can say from equilibrium principles tau xy that is exactly equal to tau yx. Similarly tau xz that is exactly equal to tau zx. Similarly tau zy that is exactly equal to tau yz. So there are six independent scalar quantities required to represent 3D stress components. So already we have discussed these are the six independent scalar quantities required to represent the 3D stress components. These six scalars can be arranged in a 3 by 3 matrix giving us a stress tensor and that is written like this where sigma is the stress that is actually denoted by sigma ij 
and this is the stress tensor in 3 by 3 matrix where you can see in diagonal these three stresses are actually normal stresses and the remainings are the shear stresses. So once again a shear stress is positive if it acts on a positive phase in positive direction or negative phase and negative direction and all others are negative that means other than these two combinations are considered as negative. Thanks my dear friends for watching this video. Press the like button to appreciate.